Hello in game fans, the Souls-like titles are known for their challenge and difficulty, with a foreboding sense of atmosphere and grotesque monsters, which makes it one of my favourite genres, so here are the best upcoming titles that indie gaming has to offer. Elder Souls is a pixel art boss rush title that simply looks fantastic, where you enter ancient temples within a place known as the Citadel and have to slay some gods. I just talked about Fury in a recent video, and this looks to follow in their footsteps but without the bullet hell, and I expect this to be no less challenging and it makes me very happy as a fan of pixel art. While fantasy and gothic horror have been the domain of Souls games, there are an increasing number of sci-fi entries with Dolmen being of interest. This is about exploring the history of an alien planet through the eyes of a human with both melee and ranged weapon options, so it's a change of pace. An interesting note from the store page is that there is crafting where you can harvest materials from dead bodies, so perhaps some Monster Hunter inspiration. I believe it was initially slated for 2020 but was delayed, so I do hope that it gets the time it needs to be great. Cut the flesh, the mind will fall. Slay the seven, save us all. Fulfill what others failed to do. Mornia depends on you. Morbid the Seven Acolytes was one of the inspirations behind this video since it got a release date next month, so I expect to see a lot more of it on the channel. This self-styled horror punk title looks gorgeous in a very similar way to Blasphemous, with its share of horrific and gory enemies and bosses. It's tough to do a 2D slow style game with the top-down perspective, but very interested to give this a try. A smaller title that I stumbled upon is Deathbound, where I do like the helmet or hat that our main character wears. It talks about a medieval world that arises from technological ruins, so I'm expecting an interesting setting where you're able to absorb the essences from dead warriors, resulting in 5 different classes which seems very similar to Mortal Shell. I absolutely love the minimalistic pixel art style of The Cock, which makes it very unique in my opinion, though unfortunately, this sentiment doesn't seem to be shared by an overwhelming majority since this did go to a Kickstarter but it was unsuccessful. It's a story of exploration of a mysterious massive walled kingdom that appeared out of nowhere in the middle of a plague, and I do love exploring worlds like this. As far as I know, this developer is still working on it, perhaps looking for a publisher or alternative sources of funding, and as such, I'll keep you posted if there are any updates.
One of the most impressive titles in development is Bleak Faith Forsaken, which looks absolutely fantastic, being successfully kickstarted and is still showing signs of life. This is new gameplay footage captured this year and looks mighty impressive, with the mood and atmosphere conveyed very nicely in this trailer. I have wrestled with death. It is the most unexciting contest you can imagine. It takes place in an ethereal grayness, with nothing underfoot, nothing around, without spectators, without clamor, without glory, without the great desire for victory, without the great fear of defeat. In a sickly, colorless atmosphere of skepticism, you find yourself without much belief in your own right, and still less in that of your adversary. Yet I have found that when one is reduced to nothing, the opportunity for meaning arises. When one is broken, reforging one's will is inevitable. And when one has run out of hope, faith becomes strength. Shattered Tale of the Forgotten King is a Souls-like title with platforming elements which is very interesting and this has been in early access for about 16 months so far. The updates are coming, with the latest being on Halloween, and continues to be promising, mixing in fantastic enemy and boss designs. A neat looking action adventure entry is Sands of Aura, where a powerful spell has turned the world into a sea of sand and you can sail on it, delving into dungeons, fighting enemies, gaining loot and uncovering the history of the world. Like Morbid above, it may be a little bit tricky to do a Souls-like game with this perspective, but it does look nice so I'll give it a shot. One more action-adventure title makes the list with No Place for Bravery, where you play as a grizzled warrior roaming the world in search for his lost daughter. It's a little bit brutal and gory, although not as bad as some of these other entries, with gorgeous pixel art highlighted in the environment. Gives me a little bit of a hyper light drifter vibe and should be excellent as well. I quite enjoyed the action platformer Eastern Exorcist when it released in early access in August due to the fantastic combat, stylish visuals, the Eastern theme and that it is being made by a Chinese developer.
this counts in my book since there is stamina in combat, so you cannot button mash, and as with all of these, timing and the deliberate combat is a key feature. This has been getting balancing patches and bug fixes in the 2 months or so of early access without any significant content patch yet, but it is pretty content complete and worth a play right now. Fungladoujan 从来都没有发生过a title which absolutely captivated the gaming world a couple of months ago, Black Myth Wukong, is another Souls-like RPG that draws from Chinese mythology, this time specifically from Journey to the West, where you play as the titular character. It impressed with how absolutely fantastic it looks, with many citing this as next-gen power. However, this developer did come out to say that it was still in a very early stage of development, so we'll have to wait. But if you have not seen the full gameplay trailer, it is totally worth a watch.
I'm also excited for the action-adventure title There Is No Light, which seems similar to Mobit the Seven Acolytes above, with enemies and environments that I can best describe as squishy. Like a bird, trapped in a cage, we want to fly away. But our wings are slashed into pieces. And we're left in this cold darkness. Is this the life you choose? Is this the freedom you want? There's a strange church of the hand where Hero delves into the darkness to get his newborn child back and looks gory, brutal, and fantastic. You believe in salvation? Being a big fan of Metroidvanias, Grime had my attention since it is really creepy and unsettling in all the right places, set in a world of anatomical horror and intrigue. Where it is most interesting to me is that you wield shape-shifting weapons and can consume enemies with a black hole to strengthen your vessel. It's a distinct difference from the usual organs and squishy bits of the other games, with many enemies and bosses seemingly inspired by trees and rock, with some horrific bosses shown off even in early gameplay trailers. As a fan of the genre, I cannot say no, taking the number one spot. To see more of the big picture, check out these awesome videos and I will see you after the jump.